To quickly show you my camera settings, I overexposed by about one stop most of the time using the Cine Premiere Pro that I use to edit and color grade my videos and placing it over all of our clips. We'll call it color correction. LUTs. Everyone can buy and download some free LUTs from the internet, but if you just randomly apply it to your footage, it might look bad. What's up everyone, Nixon here, hope you're doing great and welcome back to my YouTube channel. When I color grade my videos, I don't use any LUTs and you probably shouldn't do it too. Let me explain. LUT is a lookup table which is similar to putting a filter on your photo. Putting a filter on your photo works great because it's just one image and you select a filter that is in your opinion looks best for that image. But you don't use that same filter for all your images because all your images are different as long as you don't take a selfie of yourself in that same location just from different angles. Yeah. Same thing is with video. Video has multiple clips, especially if you're filming outside or you're moving with your camera where lighting condition changes over time as you move. One exception is if you're filming something static or in a studio like this tutorial where light won't change over time. Then I can cut up my video and use the same color grade or the filter on all of the clips. But now I want to show you how I color grade my videos, my vlogs. First I will show you how you can do it manually without any LUTs and explain why I prefer to do it. And after I will show you how you can get almost the same result using a LUT I made for you, my lazy friend. First I want to quickly show you my camera settings. I shoot on a Sony A6500 camera most of the time using the Cine as my log profile. Sometimes I use S-Log2 if I'm in a controlled environment with good lighting, but mostly the Cine. When shooting I overexpose by about one stop for this Cine and about two stops for S-Log2. And that's it. If you want a more detailed tutorial about my camera settings, leave a comment. Now let's jump into Premiere Pro that I use to edit and color grade my videos. Here I've selected a couple of clips from my recent vlog. They all have different light conditions. One is cloudy, other is sunny and last one is almost at night. It's blue hour when it's not quite dark, just a little kind of bluish outside. Let's start by creating a adjustment layer like this and placing it over all of our clips. We'll call it color correction. Here we'll create an S-curve to bring back the contrast out of our flat image. And after we'll add a little bit of saturation under basic correction tab. Now we have added contrast and saturation to all of our clips under the adjustment layer. And you can see it doesn't look as flat as before. Much better. What I like to do now is go through my clips one by one and make sure the white balance blacks and whites look good on each one. Since this video consists of three different clips, I will cut the adjustment layer where I want to edit white balance blacks or whites. The reason I'm doing it like this is because sometimes if I'm talking a lot, I would have many small cuts because when I talk I make a lot of mistakes and I need to cut it out and I don't want to copy and paste the same setting color grade on each one of those little clips. I would rather make one change to my adjustment layer and it will affect all those small cuts. I will use the eyedropper tool to select my white balance by finding and clicking on something that is supposed to be white. Like my t-shirt right now, that's the reason I'm wearing a white t-shirt because I can easily adjust my white balance. Most of the time I have my white balance correct from the camera. But not always. In this last night clip I forgot to change it from cloudy during the day to night bluish kind of white balance. So I can adjust it by clicking on something that is supposed to be white in my image. Sometimes it doesn't give you the correct white balance so you have to see and decide for yourself. Lastly, for basic correction, we are going to open Lumetriscopes and show waveform for Luma. You can find it under waveform type. We are going to move the black slider until the lowest point of the graph hits zero. After, move white slider until something in the graph hits 100. This graph is a representation of your video and we want your skin tones to be around 70. In this night clip, my face is one of the brightest objects and therefore the majority of this graph should be at around 70. 
You can also mess around with the highlights and shadows to make fine-tune adjustments. If my skin is too bright or too like glowy, I drop highlights just a little bit. In order for this all to work, your video has to be properly exposed out of the camera. If it isn't, you should decide yourself if it looks good or bad. If it looks bad, maybe don't push your whites all the way to 100 and your blacks all the way to zero. So congratulations, you're finished with the boring part. Now on to color grading, which is the fun part. We want to add a new adjustment layer on top of everything and call it color grade. I will be going for a subtle teal and orange look here. We are going straight into HSO secondary under Lumetri. Using the eyedropper tool, select your skin color and everything else that is the same color. Check the color slash gray to see what you have selected, your mask. Adjust it more with this plus eyedropper tool to select all of your skin or as much as you can. Use the sliders to make fine tune adjustments by dragging those corners up and down. Blur it out a lot and add some denoise. Uncheck the selection and invert the mask. Now you have selected everything besides your face. Move your color wheel down towards the teal color. You have successfully added teal to your video or to everything in your mask, which is everything besides your face, which is good. We don't want your face to be teal or blue because you are not a smurf. I hope not. <laughs> Go to effects control panel and rename the Lumetri to teal. Now let's add orange. Copy and paste it to duplicate the Lumetri and rename it to orange. Go back to HSO, Make sure you have selected orange at the top, uninvert the mask so you have only your face selected, reset the color wheel by double clicking. Move it in the opposite direction of teal, towards the orange colors. Not too much because you don't want to end up looking like Trump or those people who take fake tan. You can help yourself by opening Lumetri scopes again and showing UV vector scopes. UV? Is it UV or YUV? I'm not really sure. I've always called it UV vector scopes, but now I see there's an U in between, so it's YU and YUV vector scope. That's difficult. Anyways, uh, let's continue. Your skin should be just above the yellow and red line. Since all skin is slightly reddish and it doesn't matter what color you are. Adjust the color wheel until you're happy with your skin tones. Lastly, add some sharpening to your skin. And just like that, we have created a subtle teal and orange color grade without ruining our skin color. This method is much better because you can adjust and fine tune your color grade of each clip. And I would highly recommend learning you how to do this way quickly, like this, not using any LUTs. But if you're busy or lazy, you can just use the LUT I have created recently to get almost the same result. Add an adjustment layer over all of your clips Go to Creative, click on Look, Browse and select My LUT. And now you have your teal and orange color. You can adjust the intensity to your liking or create another adjustment layer in between those two. And just like I showed you before, adjust your whites, blacks and other colors to your liking. Before I say thank you for watching, I just want to quickly show you this chart. That shows that only 10% of you nice people are subscribed. I would highly appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and help me reach 500 subscribers before the end of this year. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in next one. Bye!